first of all, people think in terms of snap election and shortening the life of government. As a prime minister, you're there to do things. And let me say clearly and unambiguously, the basic comfort, uh, uh, the basic context of leadership is to improve the condition of your people. Yes. And you have a time frame within to do that. Now, if a prime minister, remember the parliamentary term is five years. If you cut short and have election four years after, to get five, that means you're only given, you're only going to the election to get four. Because you'll have, have one and you're yes, giving it yes, up. Yes, yes. So, People don't put that into the calculation and more for when, uh, I suppose, in Prime Minister Gonzalez's case, he, he, he knows about his health condition and everything. He must be like me, sensing his own mortality. And, and so he'll go for as long as he will. I thought, I thought he would wait until his the anniversary of his first win will take place. But after I heard about the preparations of how the police were going to vote, I knew elections what, what, were wrong. What, what do you mean? What do you mean? They were, all, all the poli policemen have to be on duty, but they also have to vote. Right. Are you going to be on duty in Kittels when you have to vote in Georgetown? Those are the considerations that you've got to do in organizing okay, the police. Okay, so okay. when I heard that that was happening, I was satisfied the elections were around the corner. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, I, so before I get, I, I was going to ask, let, let me get into some, some national issues before I get into the politics of things. So James. Um, dengue, Corona, or COVID-19, how do you assess the government handling of these two? Well, Bing, before we talk, health. I want to take this opportunity to extend my good wishes to Mrs. Eloise Gonzalez. I understand that she has some um, sounds like serious problems that could create a lot of pain and that she's off there getting an operation. I don't know if she's had it yet but I wish her all the best. But let me Tell your little one between Mrs. Gonzalez, Ralph and I. After Ralph came back from the royal wedding, <laughs> the wedding of William and Kate, I was shocked that he went because, you know, he's an anti-royalist, anti-imperialist, that he's got his slavery hung up and all that kind of thing. So I said, Ralph, how come you went to this royal function? He says, well, you know, it's a matter of protocol. In the, in the position that you have as prime minister, there are certain things you have to go to. Right. I said, Ralph, don't give me that. The wife wanted to go and you couldn't say no. <laughs> he had to go. He had to go. He, he had, had to, to go. go. He had to go. <laughs> right. So to come back to the situation, I think we seems up to now to have handled the coronavirus thing, well, right. we have no cases in St. Vincent. I understand St. Lucia now has a problem because of the linkage of people going up and down between St. Lucia and Martinique, and Martinique has a bit of a problem. So we are fortunate with that and what we have put into place. Mm -hmm. the, but the big problem now is the dengue. Right. And uh, it puts into focus too the real concerns of the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Two things people are mainly worried about. I say I wish should say three. And top of the list is health. People are concerned about the health. That means they're concerned about the condition of the hospital, but etc. Before you go there, though, I, I once interviewed Prime Minister Gonzalez, and he said that they had done some polls 
the Unity Labour Party. And the polls that they did, that the results were showing that the leadership of the ULP was higher than health. That persons were more concerned about that. How does that sound? Very arrogant. You think so? You put in yourself before the health of the people? Huh? How, why, how, what is the criteria of measuring your popularity versus health? You know, I don't understand that at all. Mm. I mean, I'm a trained statistician too. I'm not trained statistician, but I studied a lot of statistics. And I can't see the basis of that comparison. Mm. The, the two issues before people largely health condition and and the health in their pocket right you know economy right? the economy yes. how much how much do you have and how are you live in you know and of course we know the poverty around our capital here i was shocked the other day in mustik when the workers in mustik told me that they don't like coming up to st vincent on their days off <laughs> because of the pressures that they're under from their friends and from family and want to work here and give me a, give okay. me a something Asking there. For assistance poverty, yes. poverty. Yes. And I mean, it has, there's a lot of transformation. For example, people who used to be successful banana farmers mm -hmm. are now in town as security guards and not making e even enough money. To, to live a good life, not uh, not uh, with the quality that they had as a farmer. Okay. And what is more, why is it that security is now one of the biggest forms of employment in St. Vincent? That, that comparison, I would like to the Dr. Gonsalves to get a polling on that. Why is it that poverty is such a, a big issue? in yeah. this country so so let me take you back to the question of the dengue and and COVID 19 and and the government's handling of these two these two well dengue has been with us and mosquito borne diseases have been with us and that issue first of all that issue first of all reflects on the environmental condition in the country and uh, the general state of the villages we used to have i don't like to harp on the past but we used to have a best village competition in which people in every community were vying to say that they were the cleanest and the best and the prettiest etc and so on that spirit of togetherness in a community and wanting your community shine, I think that spirit has been a bit broken. And uh, I am worried and I am saddened by the deaths that I hear from in regard to dengue. Young girl, brilliant girl, 13 years old, dies in the hospital. And the day before she died, she sent her homework back to the school. And it, I mean, that that is a sad case, what is happening. And I am worried about the dengue. And what is more, I can say, tell you, Bing, as you know, we are in the tourism business in Bekwe. We have had cancellations because of dengue. So on top of the problems of coronavirus, the perception of people getting out of their own country and having to transit Barbados or somewhere else to get here. Suddenly we have the enemy within the gates here. Mm -hmm. And when we are just about thinking that we are taking off and having some hope about the upcoming season. Remember the last season terminated in March in one of the top months of tourism income. And uh, this is serious business, very serious business. And I am not satisfied 
that the Ministry of Health has done a good job. In this regard, I understand the Chief Medical Officer has blamed the people of St. Vincent. Well, you can always blame the people for St. Vincent or everything, but the, your job is to improve the condition, the quality of life for the people in St. Vincent. D during your, your time in office, did you have outbreaks uh, on, on the level of, of this time? No, no. No, but you you must have had some some dengue outbreak during the, the time. Well, you... it it was no problem. We handled it and got rid of it quickly. How, how how did you do it? Well, we did spraying and we organized the communities and had our people going around and looking inspections all around and see the possible breeding sites of the mosquitoes. It calls for a national campaign to not give the uh, the mosquito the opportunity to arise. But then. Before I go any further, I, I would like to summarize for you what I see this election is all about. Because the bottom line is that, what is this election about? First of all, I think this is one of the most important elections in our history. And I have been through several and the, the tasks now are enormous. And therefore, the choices are most, more, most important now. You need to have a government that is not vindictive. You, have, you need to have a government that will be fair with the people. And you need to have a government that addresses the issue. And the big issue in this country also, I mentioned health and and uh, poverty and so on but one big issue in this country is fair the climate of fair we cannot say with all the talk about independence that we have reached the zenith of freedom in this country you know you cannot criticize the government you cannot uh, speak your mind and this is what is frightening a lot of people in the voting process. I am bothering with politics. I am not into that because I don't know what's going to happen to me. Hmm. And it is affecting even mature people. You know? And uh, this is worrying. And this is why I consider this election one of the most important in a lifetime in a generation and people have got to make a choice the, the the last time you you were here with mr james sitting right where you're sitting there you said you made a statement about this elections will be as well about people being fed up of ralph do you still do you still feel that way now that the date has been announced and 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 people are going to go to the polls on, on november 5th well, Ralph, I can tell you what I have done. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope the cameras can pick that up. Is that a bumper sticker? That is the bumper sticker of the New Democratic Party. A fed up, a Ralph. And you, see the, and you see the man there with his yellow tie on? <laughs> Blowing fumes out of his, out yes. of his ears. Yes. And Ralph is in red. Ralph is in red. You see, and that is not all. After people get tired of that one, we have another one. Me too fed up for Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> That's very interesting. <laughs> that, that is interesting. Are, are these out as yet? This is the first time I'm seeing them. I've not yes, been around. Yeah, well, these they, are out as these are out? They so, are they're being distributed among the candidates. Okay, so two bumper stickers, two sets of bumper stickers. One saying a fed up a Ralph, and the other saying me too fed up a Ralph. Well, one got to go out first before the other. Okay, the first one, the first <laughs> one, a fed up a Ralph got to go out first. No, but you see, again, let me come back to the purpose of this election. You see, we, very simple and straightforward, we have got to get our people to understand. That this election, at this time of coronavirus, this time of pressure on the economy, this time of collapse of tourism, 
this time of collapse of our agriculture. It is rough stuff. And what you vote for now, you will have to live with for many, many years. And the choice is between more broken promises, complacency, and the self-interest of the government party. You know? So we have to bear in mind this. And NDP has, I am sure, is an alternative. We have performed. We have proven that we have performed. Look at some of the things the government doing. Look at the recent thing about Dr. Murray's wife and acquisition of land. Good God, we acquired land all over this place. We acquired Orange Hill. We acquired Lauders. We acquired Diamond. We acquired Mount Wynn and Peter's Hope. We acquired land for the community college. All of that were done with proper negotiation. And we acquired the Tobago Keys. First of all, when you're going to acquire land, the courteous thing to do is to write to the people that said, I would like your particular land for a certain purpose, etc. And you get that point across. Now, the person can then tell you they don't want to, they don't want you to take over the land, or they might tell you, yes, but this is the price. Right. You know, and you explore all possibilities of persuasion and getting things done before you use the hammer that you have behind. I mean, look at the way Marcus de Freitas has been treated. Even the court has given judgment on behalf of the man. And then you go in about this business, just suddenly you wake up, you get a notice that your land has been acquired. That is important. And that kind of thing being undermines confidence in investment in our country. They can do a poll on that too. <laughs> do a poll on confidence. And what are the factors affecting confidence? Do a poll, you know, whether the leadership of the ULP now inspires confidence. I'll say to Ralph, you know, as a good friend, I mean, we chat and we respect each other. I mean, he's got to admit the shine has come off of the ball. He, he don't have worthy new ideas in ULP. They're going to lift you higher. Lift you higher from where? Lift you out, out, out of the mud that we have dumped, you know. <laughs> yeah, you, you need a, 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 a good a good front end loader to get you out of this hole. You see, this these are the choices, you know. So Ralph has become complacent, you know. And what is sad, I heard him campaigning in in not win what mm. now he has a candidate that's been there montgomery for 20 years 20 years yet ralph is now saying bring back the comrade you want to tell me your candidate can't be the prime objective in the constituency I know that people vote for leadership, but after 20 years, surely you should be able to win a constituency without relying on the coat strings of the leader. And when he does that kind of thing, he is pointing out the weaknesses of the ULP as they approach this campaign. You see, and then you have all the problems that are obvious to the people of St. Vincent of the broken promises. Look at the amount of broken promises. Of course, you can say he has built the Argyle Airport. But look at the broken promises. Where is the country? Where is the cross-country road? Where is the pavilion that he was to get from Colonel Gaddafi? Don't forget them. The stadium, All of those things. The but before, before let, 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 let me pause you about the, the cross-country road. If my, my memory serves me correctly, the NDP had campaigned hell hard against the government doing the cross-country road. And I am hearing now 
uh, members of the NDP asking the same question that you just asked. Where is the cross country road? Listen, first of all, we have to understand Mother Nature in developing a country. You got to understand the topography of your country. Yes. You got to understand the soils. We know that the moment you go into the hill in St. Vincent and you touch it, you got to build a retaining wall because our soils are light and friable, that is called in, techni in, in technical language. And there is no, it is not possible, I'm saying physically possible to go across St. Vincent. It is not. And they have seen from the geothermal thing that there's a lot of heavy rock down there, you know. And it isn't easy when you go down to go through the kind of solid rock we have in St. Vincent. And that the geothermal one again. Where is, where is that? How much money we have? How much debt we have with that? You see? <laughs> So, all right, let, we got to stick up in, Sir James. We got to just pause there. Oh, remember your, what you were saying. I got to do a station like that. The top is just gone past 8 o'clock. Let me do this and come right back. It's 8 o'clock in SVG. We got Sir James in the house this morning. It's Tuesday morning as we take it to help to them. Let's do this and come right back. We That's us, OMG in the morning. Uh, we got Sir James inside as our special guest this morning. And he's chatting with us all things elections, politics, economy, all things in Vincent and the Grenadines. You, you spoke a while ago, Sir James, about I just want to take you back a step uh, when you said that this is the most important general elections that we will ever face. Uh, I, I want to pick up on that a little bit because uh, you didn't say why. Why is this important? It's general elections so important. First of all, we have a government that has been in for 19 years and the quality of life in this country has not improved. And the fundamental thing is the people's con concept of themselves. We are not a free society. And democracy is supposed to produce freedom, liberty. You should be able to feel free. And uh, you have a situation where you're not going to get business. The playing field is not level. I mean, take for example, The government offered and built a number of schools. No? And uh, all of them awarded to Chinese company. And one of them given to a local contractor, Marine and General, taken away and given to somebody else after they won the contract. I mean, what kind of country is this? How are you going to have fairness? And we have to break that cycle. We have to get into a new direction. We have to literally, we are fighting for the soul of this country. I mean, take for example, Ralph. Uh, take for example, Ben. I think in our time, or NDP time, we had a clear and unambiguous policy with absolute clarity. We aim to create a property owning democracy. We aim to make sure that people had money in their pocket so that they could talk freely. And we were developing a middle class. Look at the quality of the homes in our country all over St. Vincent. There's no big difference these days between Cane Garden and uh, and uh, Lauders. <laughs> no big difference between Cane Garden 
and the curtains, you know, there's a certain quality of life we had we had we have produced. And but this element of fear, you see, there are two components of fear being. Fear of your well fear of your well being and fear of your own life and society. When Prime Minister Gamsar took over, he said one thing that I admire him for, and he was absolutely right in it. He said he had been a lawyer dealing with criminals, and he knows the mind of criminals. And as a result, he will be able to deal with crime. It didn't seem as though his practice has become <laughs> led to any results. You know, people, the more security you got to have now, look at the building, you got to have uh, all kind of finger touching things to get through your doors, to get up here and so on. In my time, you didn't need that. You know? how, how do you assess the situation generally with regards to the different components of society, meaning the elderly, the youth? Well, the components of society, if you take them in terms of the age factor, the older folks are worried. They are worried about their children and grandchildren. Long ago, you could be pretty sure you graduate from school and you can get a job. The government is pretty well saturated now with jobs. The only way the jobs can come from is the private sector. And for the private sector to grow or to expand, it requires confidence that we are run a country, we are a country run by laws and not run by men. And uh, then, of course, there are the middle-aged people who have the same concerns about what quality you have of life for their, their generation. Look, Bang, Bing. In the past, an individual could anticipate having a home. Do you think the young people feel in this country that they will be able to build their own home? I'm talking about the concept of the feelings of the people. And the youth need to be inspired so that they will aspire. We need really to show that there is growth in our society and our, our well-being. Our country, you talk about, you even take the transportation. How many new cars you see in St. Vincent compared with the other islands? You know, we all into buying second-hand cars and repairing them. And uh, the, the shrinking of the middle class, the shrinking because of the economic pressures, the shrinking because of the whole atmosphere in the economy is crippling us. St. Vincent is now made up of rich and poor. Mm. So James, the Argyle International Airport would go down as a great legacy for Prime Minister Gonzalez. That being said, what do you say of the performance of the government in the last what, 19 years? What, what do you say about their performance generally well we've got a big airport and empty pockets and where is it with all of this coronavirus now i mean argyle airport argyle boat is symbolically important to st vincent emotionally 
It's important to them emotionally, you know. Not rationally. What do you mean? Well, people didn't reason about it. What will it cost me? How much? And what is the cost benefit analysis to me? I, I, I give it my blessing, you know. No problem. It's there. I wish it well. But look at the other areas of the economy. Look at the banana industry. Everybody knows what the banana industry was. Right? I remember having meetings with the, the annual general meeting of the Banana Growers Association. Done by Russell Cinema. And they were a boisterous group. We even had to put banana identity number on your on your identity card, you know. We had a banana number. And that was to make sure that you borrowed it in one name and you sold in the same name. Because people were borrowing from the Banana Association in one name and selling in another, etc. But it was a boisterous group. They're all out there with $100 bills and drunk. Where is the banana industry today? Let me tell you. Ralph and ULP buried the banana industry without flowers. They didn't even put any flowers over the grave <laughs> and they turned over the graveyard to Soboto. <laughs> <laughs> But, but you forecast this, though, in your book. Huh? You, you, what? you forecast the, the ending of the banana regime that we had while you, when you did your, your, your autobiography. I, I forecast, too, that the Europeans, the, it was the end of preferences. I forecast the end of the preferences I did not forecast the end of the banana industry. Okay. They're slightly different things. We had to become more efficient and we had to diversify the economy. And we plan to diversify the economy using a lot with regard to our marine resources. Like, well, you know, develop things like in the yachting business, which <laughs> look at what the yachting industry is now like in all the other islands except in St. Vincent. What is it like? Well, I mean to say, if you if you go to Car Caracu, that was way behind us with regard to yachting. Caracu is now ahead of Beque mm. and St. Vincent. Okay. There was a time when Myro had more restaurants than Caracu. Now Caracu is ahead of us. Mm. And you think that's down to bad management? Or what do you... What? Well, first of all, remember, don't forget, because, pardon me, when people keep quarreling about Son Mitchell, he always talking about the past, but it is relevant. When I say about the burial of the Banana Association, remember that when Ra Ralph took over, they were going to make the industry better, and he was going to sell bananas to Libya. I saw that printed in the, in the Times of London, you know, and when you say that um, the European market is not as important to you as the new markets you're going to have in place like Libya, they forget that Libya is closer, uh, closer to the Cameroons than it is to us. Uh, those are, those are preposterous. Okay. Preposterous ideas. Okay. You, yourself and Prime Minister Gonsalves have similar records being in office for two terms. How do you think the public will judge your legacy? We spoke about Prime Minister Gonsalves. One of his legacies will be the Agile International Airport. Well, Ben, you asked me a question that is not proper for me to answer. It is not proper for me to say what the people will think of my legacy. But I will mention a few things that I am happy I did. Yesterday, I went to a funeral of one of my favorite ministers, Olin Denny. 
And I went to the funeral of Emery Robinson, Minister, Attorney General, not too long ago. Whenever anybody goes to a cemetery today, they have to remember Sam Mitchell. How so? Because I abolish death Jews. You can die in peace now. <laughs> and you'll be able to die in peace, peace. peace. <laughs> So even the young people, <laughs> you say we're doing anything for the youth. That's something we did for the youth. That you could take over your mother and father house without facing the tax man. What has Dar Ralph done that matches that? I don't want to talk about the whole property owning democracy and all the estates that we bought and gave land to the people, etc. And uh, Ralph has his, his Argyle legacy, you know. But, you know, let me say this. As I study Prime Minister Gonzalez, I go back to so my studies in genetics and uh, reading features into plants, etc. There was a, a Russian psychologist called Anton Pavlov. And people could research, young people can go into their iPhones and so on, and check up of Ivan Pablo. Pablo experiment on on psychology, mm -hmm. and I can see that Ralph has mastered Pablo. Pablo did an experiment on dogs. And uh, he would ring a bell with one set of dogs and give it food right away. And the other set of dogs, he would give them food without the bell or he'd ring the bell two hours before. So you had one set of dogs getting the meal when a bell is rung and another getting nothing because they ain't know about no bell and food and this is the way ralph used certain terms <laughs> Argyle airport symbol registering people education revolution bam that inside of the mind utterly hall bam don't forget you know when Ralph had the grand time of the commencement of the building of Argyle Airport and it, he went there in a cloud of dust landing in a helicopter and the last thing he said and don't forget we have Otley Hall so Ralph has run this country with certain psychological attacks on the minds of Vincentians and they went for it they hear the bell ring and they say okay this is where the food is that's an interesting, that's an interesting perspective, Sir James. <laughs> that's an interesting perspective. <laughs> Speaking about influences and bells, though, let me ask you this thing that just came to my mind. The distribution, one of the one of the strategies that I think of the ULP has been the distribution of lumber galvanized and cement. Do you think that this will have an effect on the outcome of the general election? Well, given, given what you've just said there as well. Well, let me say, Ben. First of all, I tell everybody to take what you can get. Take what you can get. I know some people quarreling. That's who have getting more and some not getting any. Which reminds me of the scriptural reference. Unto him that hath shall be given, and him that hath not shall be taken the little taken away the little that he thought he had. Mm. <laughs> you know? Now let me say something scientific 
about Lombok. That's out of my field. Uh, because, from my field of study. The kind of lumber we get here for giveaway is not first grade lumber. It's third quality lumber at a low price. And if anyone looks at that lumber, you will see along the veins of the lumber a blue streak. A blue streak. Look, I call on carpenters or anybody or any of you that have the free lumber go and look and see if you don't see some blue streaks that blue streak is come a thing called the blue stain fungus which penetrates the wood in all the lumber yards and it penetrates the wood and to the sap of the wood and it means that the shelf life of that piece of the wood is very poor. It's not the letter. If you, if you build a home with a window yeah. frame made out of that wood, within five years, you'll see it soft as anything that needs to be replaced. In other words, the quality, you're not getting the best when you get and I would like people to remember that they should tie the giveaway to VAT. How so? Compared to VAT. You pin for the giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you buy a tin of corned beef or a sardine, you pin. For the, you you paying for the lumber and galvanize, but let me turn to another. So aspect. you're saying it's not it's not actually free? Eh? No, of course not free. It's it's coming from your taxes. It's difficult to convey that to people who don't pay taxes, but they pay that, and when they go to buy things in the shop, and they go home and they look at the free lumber, they must say, wait. You know, I want them to question their own mind. But I say, take it, enjoy it, use it as you can. But I want to touch on the other aspect of corruption uh, in elections, of sharing out $100 notes on the night before election, 2 o'clock in the morning, you go to the home, complete with security or whoever you go and you're sharing out hundred dollar in a home again I would tell the people take your hundred dollars see what you could do with it the next day if you have a light bill Put it towards the light bill because the hundred dollars can't pay many light bills. So you take your hundred dollars. But I would think that in your own breath you should say, tell them, uh, 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 thanks for your money, go to hell. You know? But let us do a calculation. And because you talk about education revolution yes, but, uh, be before before we, before you, you you move on to to that because that was one of my questions okay um someone in the whatsapp is saying sir james is comparing vincentians to dogs i am saying <laughs> i let me let me go further with my thing i'll come back to that i am saying what people have to understand, first of all, is the psychological implications. What yeah. I'm saying, you know, the, the bell, they ring the bell. I'm not comparing Vincent and the dogs. I'm saying Pavlov has got you the system where the way he treated the dogs, and it is an important psychological principle in all kinds of textbooks on psychology. You just ring a bell. It comes from the idea of how dogs were treated. Okay. 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 Now, let me go back to the point about the $100. 
when a politician gives you a hundred dollars the night before election he's giving you a hundred dollars but you're giving him 455 days in parliament because it's five years plus the 90 days yes. it works out of 455 days you are given you're taking a hundred dollars and calculate what it is worth you in other words it's a do uh, do consider it like a business you're dealing with a politician he's given you a hundred and you've given him 455 days mm. so what are you getting for that calculate it and divide it you're going to find out that you're not even getting two cents a day <laughs> <laughs> two cents a day and that can't even feed a dog <laughs> huh? i want people to understand these things you are given a politician five years plus 90 years and so that is what he's buying but you know they talk about slavery and reparation well <laughs> to me that is a, a return to slavery mm. you're selling yourself not somebody selling you yes you're allowing yourself to be bought yes would you agree with mr james that the education revolution is a good thing there again the education revolution is the ringing of the bell how so you know you just call the word education revolution yes and it conceptualized certain things in the mind that you're going somewhere but which was education revolution when errol barrow introduced free tertiary education to university they called it in barbados the quiet revolution always a noisy 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 terminology but we throughout the eastern caribbean in my time we had the concept of of complete secondary education it was a program throughout the eastern caribbean developed since 1991 mm. and what had to be done of course was to build more schools and get more teachers trained etc because it was not just a big matter of building putting up more buildings so that concept of universal secondary education is not new Ralph could say, of course, he implemented it, but don't think that he implemented an idea that he had or that he created. But if, if this is part of, if we're going to use the Pavlos theory, mm -hmm. education revolution, what should be your party's response? What our party's response? Yes. Because based on the, the theory of Pavlo, which you just said, it is clearly working. So how, how should your party respond to this? Do you have a response? We want to make sure not, not only that people go to school. We want to make sure that we teach people to think. We want to make sure that people develop their own brains in, individually that they have their own concept of, of life. We want to educate people so that they will understand that education is a continuing exercise. It's not a matter you go to school and you pack up and you get a piece of paper. Education is something you go on with. You got to keep reading. How successful is a bookshop in St. Vincent, selling his own uh, uh, bookshop, he only sells school books. Where is the 
concept of getting people to do self-development through education. Those are the things that we got to keep foremost in our mind. The practical things of getting a building, etc. But then, of course, where is the inspiration for the teachers? Where is the inspiration for the teachers? They were promised 30%. Where is the proper inspiration for the nurses? They were promised 30%. The police were probably 30 percent. Civil service are over 30 percent. We make a lot of promises. Where is the substance? And what is the purpose of the education revolution, so-called building more schools or having more classrooms at the end of it, no jobs? You must have the private sector developing in the country so that you have the jobs. All right, let's take a break. We're going we're gonna to stick a pin right here. We're going to come right back on the other side of 830. Um, let's do this. Come right back. This is OMG in the morning. So James is our special guest in studio this morning. James inside with me. Um, Show back quite relaxed. Just had some water. Yeah, are you ready Thank to you go again? Much. Yeah. Education, we were on the question of education. I asked you what was the NDP's response. I don't think I've had an answer. Well, let me tell you, first of all, let us set the record straight. There is nothing done by this government that matches what we did with tertiary, tertiary education on getting the, the community college going. When we took over, there were only 50 students a year from the high school and grammar school doing A levels. Our target was to get 500 a year, and we have met that target and more. Since 1997, when that school was opened, we have had. 500 students a year doing a level. Multiply 500 by 23 years. Multiply that and check the number of qualified teachers that we have there. Where did the professionals who got their degrees go in the past? We turned around education. We turned it around to carry people to a higher level. Now they're talking about they're going to get country to a higher level. We moved education to a higher level. And it is permanently at a growing higher level. Hmm. Interesting. Let me get you on some. Since you came out, you've been... I mean, you, you've been the attention of everyone, the ULP, the focus has been on you, understandably so. You announced in Bekwe that the, the NDP will be moving from yellow, I don't know if moving from the color yellow, or if your t-shirts will be white this time around. What, what's the, I mean, what, what's, is, was that a mistake? Was it really what you said it was going to be, that it was because that you wanted to bring the, 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 the people together of St. Vincent and the Grandines and from not having them wear yellow but wear white. What was the real story behind that? I mean, I've heard, I've heard that you ordered the t-shirts and when the t-shirts came, this is what I've heard from the ULP on, on, on Star Radio, and when the t-shirts came, you were most shocked when you opened the boxes and you saw that they were white, that there was a mistake. And that is the reason why the t-shirts are yellow. That's what the ULP have said. Is that the case? People will always look at the shadow if they want to and not the substance. I wonder if all these people talking about yellow know where yellow came from. 
in the concept of the NDP. The old people know. My brand was a yellow Volkswagen that pounded the countryside of this country. Remember that. So yellow is an important color to me. The older people still know San Mitchell and the yellow Volks. Yellow is still being used by the party. But as we analyze the situation, going into an election, two components are there for winning. Both political parties have a bedrock 45% of the vote. The, the key to winning is the youth vote and the swing voters. Now, this country has been tribalized into red and yellow. And do people know the history of red? Red is entirely a socialist, communist identity. Go and look up, people have the educational tool now of the internet and your iPad and your, on your phone. Go and look up, study red as a, as look at red as a historical political symbol. And you'll see the whole history of it there. But I think, and I think most people will agree that it was time we go for to start to come with a new impact. Let the Vincentians know that this was a new election. And uh, let me tell you what my final object objective would be. And it comes back to the education revolution. I hope one day we will be mature enough to scrap t-shirts in an election. Rely on media like yourself, rely on social media, and that is the direction in which we have to go. We're talking about the future. And I would hope that we will be smart enough and Vincentians will not be mesmerized by any herd mentality that they will think for themselves like the rest of the world. You think, you think, uh, in, in other countries, they have T-shirts going, but it's for the private sector. You, the private sector, one fellow will say, I will print the picture of me a Motley, and you could get one for $20. This whole idea, so that should be something left for the private sector, and who want a T-shirt, buy it. This question of elections and t-shirts is i hope it is a passing phase i would hope too that we don't start going around the country with red and yellow and paint up people's walls and who we'll put this graffiti all over the place i went to st lucia after the election i didn't see a single wall painted we still have walls painted. If you're going to paint, use water paint. As a matter of fact, this is something that Dr. Friday told me the other day. Because I was telling him that I didn't think that we should go for this painting up and so on. He said, well, if the people want to paint, we'll give them the guidance that they should use water paint only on the street so it wash out after a while. I'd say, well, fair enough. Okay. And Prime Minister Gonzalez said in 2001, that you left him a bad hand. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Those were his exact words, that he received a bad hand. I want to ask him if he is leaving a good hand for Dr. Friday. Is he leaving a good hand for the youth? Look, Ralph has had so many disasters around him, it ain't funny. When he took over with the bad hand, 
How long did it take him to buy the shares in Liat? Cash. 27 million. He bought shares in Liat in three months. Where did it come from? It didn't come from Taiwan. It didn't come from the European Union. It didn't come from Canadians. It didn't come from the overseas, the, the diaspora contribution. Huh? He bought that in Liat. He spent $27 million of our taxpayers' money that we had put aside. And we had it. And, and then you, you invest $27 million and at the end of your career, at the beginning you buy Liat, and before you go, you sell it for a dollar. <laughs> that is performance for you. <laughs> Bad hand. We we run a surplus on recurrent expenditure for for sixteen and a half years. We always had our money to make our counterpart contribution to projects. Look. Is Ralph leaving money for us to pay Marcus the Fritters? Is he leaving money? He can he give me the assurance that government does not owe Vinlek? But when will we get there? And uh, Dr. Friday and our NDP team will make sure that the people have all the information that was hidden from them. I only hope the civil servants don't tear up the papers, but we want to make sure we educate the people on what we received. In the same way, we did it in 1984. We set up a committee with uh, um, distinguished invention, and we looked at the public sector financing and debt. It's like when you take over a house, you must or take over a business, you got to know what you have there. Again, Pavlov, ring the bell. That was another story. You just can say, bad hand. In order to just take these single words, revolution. But let me give him this one now. It ain't revolution. It's revolution. It's reformation on the Friday and the end. What? Taking people out of recession and depression. You you spoke about ULP promises, right? Tell us about NDP promises now. What, what promises are we getting from the NDP? Well, we, we hear jobs, 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 jobs. I uh, we're not hearing. I how are I, jobs going to come? I will leave that matter to Doctor Friday to enunciate and the party to enunciate. I think that uh, the, the matters of policy guidance, you know, uh, and the details are what will be published by the party, are being published and being put out there. I can only talk in a theoretical concept. And I think that is what my role should be to get people to understand what kind of St. Vincent do we want? What kind of St. Vincent? Are we proud of this St. Vincent? Look. After the Grenada, after the Grenada Revolution, we loan Grenada policemen. Look what Grenada is today. Vincentians hustling to get jobs in Grenada and in St. Lucia. You know, policy is relevant. But this, this, this political exercise, we got to understand. When you get it down to nuts and bolts, it is vote Ralph and get Camilo. What was that? Vote Ralph and you get Camilo. How so? Well, <laughs> when you see the pictures of their advertisement, you know, you see Ralph and 
Kamalo and Subutu. And Subutu. Yes. But look at the smoke on Kamalo's face, boy. That smile on his face tells the whole story. Visual Im images are there, you know. What do you think? What do you think is going to happen? You said vote Raf and get Kamilo. Explain that some more. Eh? Explain that some more. Well, I know as a former prime minister, you know, you have me here because of her. Listen, you really think Ralph planning to last five terms? He wants to install Kamilo. That's it in a nutshell. And, and that mood is there inside the country, you know. And that's what people fed up. Well, Ralph and Kamilo and Saboto, let's look at your team with Dr. Friday. Are you happy and confident with the group of men and women that is going forward in the elections in the NDP as candidates? Well, let me say, first of all, election is about leadership. And I think Dr. Friday has matured and he is ready to lead. I am pretty sure that he is wise enough to take balanced decisions. I have found that in dealing with him that he listens and he takes time.